Hola, my friends from near and far. Bienvenidos. Welcome back to the Power Up. By now, we all know that esports is a worldwide phenomenon. It's a space where people from every walk of life can find their place in gaming. On today's show, I'm turning the spotlight to high profile women in gaming. You might be more familiar with guys like Clip Z and Sergio Ramos, but allow me to introduce you to stream queens Cristina Amaya and Judith Barbosa. But first, a quick review of Valheim for PC and Little Nightmares 2 on PlayStation 5. Valheim is a survival game that's on the PC, published by Coffee Stain Studios, developed by Iron Gate. It's one of those games that if you are a big fan of Viking or Norse mythology, you're gonna really want to play this game. You're probably wondering, what's the whole point of this game? Well, you've been sent to Valheim to fight the Forsaken, and you have to kill each and every one of them to be able to make your way to Valhalla. If you're a fan of Vikings and you are looking for a new survival game to sink your teeth into, Valheim is definitely going to be a game for you. I give it a four Narsars out of five. All right, Little Nightmares 2, it is published by Bandai Namco, developed by Tarsier Studios. If you're thinking it's gonna be any different from the first, you're dead wrong. It's just as dark. This is pretty much a puzzle game, so you have to figure out the game as you go. And this game isn't long. This game can be probably beaten in a couple hours, but it's definitely one of those games you play over and over again so you could find out any Easter eggs or any secret rooms that are going to uncover more of the story that is Little Nightmares. So I would give Little Nightmares four Narsars out of five. Over the past few years, Latinx gamers have been crushing it on Twitch and Discord. Using social media as their soapbox, these women have made their mark and in turn, the gaming community more inclusive. Christina Amaya and Judith Barbosa have been using their platform to not only enlighten, but to educate while staying true to their culture. Please help me welcome Chris and Judy. Ladies, primas, welcome to the Power Up. Hiya. Hey, thanks for having us. How did you get into the gaming world? I remember being a uh, little baby when my mom came home from a garage sale with an NES and it was history from there. It was Mario, it was like Sesame Street games, a bunch of platformers. And it really wasn't until I think when we started going to social activities, NYC League of Legends is mm. what really opened my eyes to the fact that um, we could be gamers and social at the same time. My dad bought me a Nintendo 64 back in 96 and I started gaming then. Then they got me a Game Boy and then they had to keep getting me all the new Nintendos, GameCube, etc. Did you have anyone that you admire that is a Latinx gamer or someone that is like a developer? At the time, I didn't really know if anybody was Latinx. I now know a ton of people that are like Gracie Arenas. I know Gabby Ponce. I know people from all over the industry, but when I was younger, I didn't see myself at all. Eddie Gordo in Tekken was like my hero and it, the reason why I ended up studying capoeira in college, right? So like even being Brazilian, like I had to kind of hold on to those particular moments and because there were few and far between. What inspired you then to either become that inspiration, to become a voice? We'll start with you, Judy. I feel like this is a lot of the conversation that uh, came around when we founded Latinx in Gaming, right? Like. We we didn't see the uh, community that we wanted to participate in, something that was just for us, just about us and inclusive, you know what I mean? Open and welcome and celebrating. So we started it ourselves. And I think honestly, the, the resonating emotion is the same. Everyone who comes by and is just happy to be here, just happy to enjoy something in their language, happy to see new things from different countries that maybe their family was from. We created this group because we didn't see the Latino XYZ creating something and making something for us. Walk us through how Latinx and gaming evolved from day one to now. Yeah, Latinx and gaming started off, I mean, you were part of the first like five people, Jen. It was like <laughs> a Facebook group and a Discord channel. And we were lucky if like, you know, we got people to join and we just kept doing panels. We kept doing social events. We kept doing speaking opportunities and we keep doing them mostly because we just want other Latinx folks to see us and go, oh, wait, I want to work in the gaming industry or I work in the gaming industry so I can join. Talk to us about some of the challenges and what you've learned about the industry running and managing Latinx. A lot of opportunities come to us and 
we can tell the difference between when someone just wants to check a box and when they really mean it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's really nice to see the amount of opportunities that are coming forward from companies, uh, opportunities, and just people in the industry who really want to make change, you know, want to make positive change. I think one of the challenges we face is just the absolute diversity of being Latino, right? Like the three of us sitting in the room, we're all Latinos, but we're completely different women, completely different goals, completely different lives, you know? And that's true, not just here in the United States as American Latinos, but that's true for Latinos in Colombia and Mexico and Brazil. Everybody has different wants and needs. People want to work here in the US. People want to start their studios in their own countries. And we just have to be respectful and mindful of that. And my policy is, is as always, like as long as you are respecting others, I respect what you want here in this industry. What are two things that you probably wish you could change or hope to change in esports? I would love to see esports grow and evolve in, while retaining its connection to the individual player. We ask people to do a lot in gaming. We ask people to put a lot on the line and we don't pay them competitively for other tech fields. And that needs to change, right? Like, I think we need to do better to pay people better. What are some positive things that as a woman, you're able to, to enjoy playing games? It's really cool to meet other women who are passionate, who want the same things you do, who love the same things you do. Like, the friendships I have with women in gaming, like, they are almost not comparable to friendships I had before. Obviously, you still got your best friends and all those close friendships, but we go through something different than, mm. than a lot of other women do. We have a different experience when we work in gaming, and that is super valuable. I think we can all agree that the world of esports is expanding by the minute, and there's room for anyone if you wish to make an impact in the community. A big shout out to all the stream queens out there, and I'll see you next time on The Power Up.